Welcome to another installment of the Soy Checkoff Check-In. I'm AgriTalk host Chip Flory. I recently talked with United Soybean Board Chair Steve Reinhardt from Ohio and with USB CEO Lucas Lynch. It was a wide-ranging conversation about the big picture issues and challenges in the soybean industry. And, you know, quite frankly, it was just too much for one podcast. So we are continuing the conversation with Stephen Lucas right now. Let's jump back into the conversation with a look at some of the innovations made possible by the soy checkoff. Lucas, what challenges did the organization have to deal with this year? How were they addressed? You know, I, I think anytime you're dealing with the innovation pipeline, you know, there's there's the opportunity that science tells you that you can, but you still got to commercialize something. You still got to bring it to market. And, uh, you know, when we get over the finish line with things like soy foam, you know, think about it, Chip. I mean, the first ever 100 percent biodegradable firefighting foam, that's fantastic win for firefighters, but it's ultimately for the environment. We no longer have the PFAS chemicals. It's 100% fr- yeah. uh, free of that. Well, you know, I would just use that as an example of one that got over the finish line. And when you think about a, over a thousand products that are out there, you know, yeah. you can do the science, you can do the research, but at the end of the day, you got to move volume and value for the farmer. And you got to make sure you're, you're, you're placing your chips, if you will, on the things that will drive demand of soy. And to me, that's always the big hurdle. Yes, science tells you that you can do something, but how do you commercialize it in a way that's meaningful to the farmer? Yep, Lucas, well said. Very well said there. I think that's that's so important, and and getting that return back to the farm gate is is obviously very important. Just a reminder here, we're talking with Steve Reinhardt, chair of the United Soybean Board, and Lucas Lynch, CEO of USB. Steve, back to you on this one sustainability is a buzzword in 2024 and and even before that it's been a major focus for agriculture talk to me about how soybean farmers are adopting some of those sustainable practices out there and how you're benefiting from those new practices sure so you know there's just a lot of different practices out there that we're using on our farm and our neighbors as well and you know, those can be something as simple as uh, no-till farming, and it's been around for a number of years. It's nothing new to the production agriculture world, but the innovation of cover crops and how those have been able to play a role in holding soil in place so we don't have erosion, but then also, you know, building up the organic profile in the soil and how that can help with water retention, you know, has been a valuable bonus to that. And, you know, then we have variable rate planting and variable rate fertilizer application and how we're able to break down these grids in these fields to a smaller unit of measure, uh, maybe a half an acre, an acre grid. So we can apply that fertilizer at the right amount at the right place and get it, you know, to where we need it, to where we're not over applying. So it's a it's a sustainability measure that way, but then it's, it also goes back to our financial sustainability as well. And again, by us doing that on the farm, we're also helping a lot of other end users of our product uh, reach their sustainability goals as well. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Steve, on the soy checkoff check-in, we have been focused on some of the emerging markets and sectors that have shown promise for soybean products and, and increasing demand for soybeans that you guys are producing out there. Summarize those emerging markets. Sure. So we have our our big markets. We're always working on, you know, biofuels, our renewable diesel, you know, moving uh, a lot of uh, oil and stuff that way. But then we're also looking at meal and how can we get more meal out into uh, Southeast Asia, for instance, you know, to build up their poultry and pork industries as well. And some of the newer markets that we're really taking a, a close look at is India now is the biggest population base in the uh, world. So how are we preparing ourselves to hopefully you know, break into that market. We don't want to ignore China, but China is no longer the uh, the big population base that they were. So, you know, you need to maintain it, but then move on to something new. Then we're also looking at uh, Africa. Africa has probably got to yeah. closely come behind India as uh, being a leader in uh, population. So we know that when we can get protein into those developing nations, it helps to secure their governments. It helps to make the lives more stable for the people that live there. And and that in turn, you know, can give a lot of stability to a region and, and really to the world in general. Excellent, Steve. 
The soy checkoff has a long history of developing key markets for U.S. soybean producers, and Africa is obviously high on the list of market development right now. That wraps up part two of a three-part conversation with USB Chair Steve Reinhardt and USB CEO Lucas Lynch. And there's more than enough in the conversation with Steve and Lucas for that third installment. Be sure to watch for that next week. I'm your host, Chip Flory. Now, let's get back to Agritalk.